I've always been curious about the Metro games. They looked a little bit like Fallout, and I love post-apocalyptic stuff, but somehow I never got around to playing them. So instead of going into yet another review without proper knowledge of the source material, I decided to blast through the original Metro 2033 game before playing Vertigo's brand new prequel, Metro Awakening. And it was fun, you know, for a flat screen game. And now that I've got both of these games under my belt, I can say two things with a fair amount of confidence. First, you don't need to know anything about the Metro series to understand and enjoy Awakening. And two, that while Metro fans, which I think I am now, will likely have fun with this game, they're gonna miss some of the basic tenets that makes a Metro game a Metro game. But let's start at the beginning. In 2013, nuclear war drove thousands of Russians underground to build a new civilization in the metro tunnels beneath Moscow. But while these tunnels are fairly safe from nuclear fallout, there are plenty of other threats down here. The intro has you fending off the tunnels from mutants, but it was an attack that not everyone survived. And then we fast forward 10 years to find you, Sirdar, returning from a mission to find out that the station chief Max is upset with your wife who's gone off her meds and is causing trouble in the metro and you take it upon yourself to go out and scavenge more medicine. It's kind of a lengthy setup for a VR game, and it does have you standing around listening to characters talk more than I'd like. But for Metro fans, this is nothing new, and the story doesn't end once you're out on your mission, as you'll be hearing voiceovers come through your radio pretty frequently throughout the game. Now listen, maybe it was the strong Russian accents, or, or maybe it was the sheer quantity of the voiceovers, but I felt like I missed a lot of what was said, so I'm sure I didn't get the full extent of the story. But even without following every minute detail, the final chapter made the whole trip worthwhile, and it was hard not to tear up, at least a little by the end. <laughs> Enough about the story, though. Metro Awakening kicks off in a room with lots of objects to interact with. Legit, there's stuff everywhere. And combining that with the amount of dialogue in the populated metro station, you don't immediately get the impression that Awakening is kind of a straightforward first-person shooter. Well mostly. You go through long stretches of walking around with story just being delivered to you through voiceovers. In being a Metro game, there's a lot of extra things to do to keep you busy. Your headlamp is recharged by cranking this device on your backpack, and you use that same device to power up trolleys and certain doors, which is fun at first, but it gets old a little too quickly. You've got to reload your health before injecting it. Entering areas contaminated with radiation means having to throw on a gas mask, which gives a nice little satisfying thunk from the headset haptics whenever you put it on or pull it off. And occasionally, you've got to wipe the condensation and debris from it. I love that these BRAF elements were included, as they're staples from the flat screen series. It makes so much more sense to do manually with your hands in VR rather than just pushing a button. And actually, your inventory is handled really well too. Rather than having a Saints and Sinners style backpack where you can just put stuff in random slots, everything here has a spot on the outside of the backpack for easy access. Air filters, grenades, even your lighter. It's all here. But I couldn't shake the feeling that despite being called Metro and taking place in the Metro universe, not to mention utilizing weapons and gadgets that I just used in 2033, that Awakening is missing one or two things that fans will be looking for. I mean, it's a familiar location and mostly feels like a Metro game should, but I would have loved to see the weapon upgrade system make its way into this game, or even some more varied environments, including the ability to let us venture outside occasionally, or even a few more of the iconic enemies. But while Metro doesn't feel quite as much like a 4A games title as I'd expect, it is an evolution for Vertigo games, which isn't a bad thing, especially if you're looking for a good first-person shooter. Vertigo is quickly becoming known in the VR space for having some of the best weapon haptics, manual reloads, and adaptive triggers on PSVR 2, and Metro Awakening gives us plenty of reasons to use them. There are enemies around every corner, and I love scavenging ammo off of fallen soldiers. But it needs to be said that I don't think normal difficulty was all that hard. Ammo was never in short supply, even when I was being reckless. Plus, Awakening teaches you how to do some basic stealth stuff, like throwing cans to distract enemies and sneak past them, but it's simply unnecessary on the default difficulty. So just a heads up for whoever this applies to. If you're someone who wants a real challenge that'll actually force you to conserve every bullet, you might want to start on a harder difficulty. Now, remember when I said that Metro is a pretty straightforward first-person shooter? Well, that argument's kind of falling apart as we go, considering that part of this is a walking sim. But also it presents a few puzzles along the way that I found really intriguing, and so much so that I wish there was more of them. Now, 
being new to the series, I have to ask you guys, why didn't you tell me that this was a horror game? I would have been way more excited to play it. There's a lot of dark sections, your headlamp has to be constantly cranked, and sometimes the game takes over and just decides how much light your headlamp will emit. You're always on edge that something can jump out and attack you, which will have you scrambling to do the manual reloads, sure, but man, that's just scratching the surface. Awakening has entire sections that can be considered straight up horror. And as the notice at the beginning of the game warns you about, there are spiders here. They'll crawl over your body and you'll have to yank them off of your hands and your face and I had to force myself through these areas. The soundtrack doesn't help anything. The unnerving combination of erratic violins will have you sweating long before you even see a spider. But all of the audio deserves a special mention here. I can flip through all nine hours of gameplay footage and no matter where I land, it all sounds good. Quality voiceovers, ambient background noise, impactful weapon sounds, intense music, it's all amazingly well done and never disappoints. The visuals are no slouch either. Even though the game is running at 120 frames reprojected, the dark environments keep the ghosting from being too bad and there's plenty of great looking character models and environments. The lighting in particular tends to stand out because there's a lot of haze or mist or fog that just hangs in the metro, allowing even the air to be lit dramatically, resulting in entire areas being bathed in saturated reds and greens and blues. It gives metro a distinct look, much more solemn, much more lonely than something like Arizona Sunshine. When I think back at my experience with Metro Awakening, I think of all these great memorable moments, which I won't spoil for you here. But unfortunately, I also remember that they're situated between long stretches of repetitive metro tunnels, ventilation shafts, and trolley rail shooter sections that kind of wear out their welcome after you've seen them two or three times. And just when you get tired of seeing the same type of environment over and over again, Awakening actually sends you through the exact same locations you've already traversed. It's all part of the story, but it feels like it's an excuse to artificially extend the length of the campaign, which for me clocked in at just over 9 hours on the normal default difficulty. There's also a ton of loading screens that separate each section of the game. Just when you really start getting immersed, everything fades to black and you watch a clock tick away for a few seconds. It's not anything major, and it's kind of become a staple of anything Vertigo puts out these days, but it just seems unnecessary on a PlayStation 5 capable of streaming information practically instantaneously. With all the interactions a flat screen metro game offers, it was kind of the perfect game to bring into VR. Sure, I could complain about the repetitive environments and that the cutscenes and conversations were a little too long, or that I wish I could have experienced some of the things I liked most about 2033. But Awakening delivers a substantial story, written by series author Dmitry Klukovsky himself, and one that I found really worth sticking with and kind of rewarding by the end. The horror elements were a blast, I liked exploring to find ammo and some collectible postcards, and the shooting, as you'd expect now from Vertigo games, is some of the best that VR has to offer. Metro is proof that VR games are evolving, however slowly. This level of quality is something we should start expecting from VR studios a little more often.